Welcome to Electron Online. Let's take a closer look at the time constant in an LR circuit. In an LR circuit, the time constant is L divided by R, the inductance divided by the resistance. Why is that? Well, L opposes a change in the current. That means that if L is increased, the time constant in is increased because it will take a longer period of time for the steady state current to be reached. R reduces the current in a circuit, so therefore there will be a smaller difference in the change of the current. If there's a smaller difference in the change, we'll get quickly, more quickly through that change. Therefore, if the resistance goes up, the time constant goes down. So the time constant is proportional to the inductance and it's inversely proportional to the resistance. And that's why the equation looks like this. As an example, if the inductance is 0.2 Henry's and the resistance is 0.4, ohms, then if you divide the inductance by the resistance, you get a half a second, which is one time constant, and we already have seen that after two and a half time constants, the final steady state current or voltage, whatever it is that we're measuring, will be very close to the final amount. In other words, it will be less than 1% of its final value. Now what happens when we change the inductance or we change the resistance? Let's say we double the inductance. So in our second case, if L equals 0.4 Henry's, then we know that the time constant will be 0.4 divided by 0.4, which is one second. Well, if the time constant is one second, it will take five time constants or five seconds for its final value to be reached. And so the decay constant or the decay curve will be a lot slower. It'll just simply take a lot longer for the final value of the current of the voltage to be reached. So in this case, the number of time constants are still the same, but since each time constant is greater, it'll take a much greater amount of time. So let's say it will take about five seconds for the very close to the final value to be reached. What happens when the resistance is increased? So if we keep the initial inductance, but now we have a larger resistance. Let me grab a different color right here. So now let's say if L equals 0.2 Henry's and R now becomes 0.8 ohms, so we increase the resistance, then the time constant will be 0.2 divided by 0.8, which is 0.25, and you can see that the time constants will be reduced, and that way the decay of the current or the decay of the voltage will be much faster, and the decay curve will look something like this, in such a way that after 1.25 seconds, we'll be within 1% of the final value of the current. You may also wonder why, when we divide the inductance by the resistance, we get units of time, units of second. That seems kind of odd, but we can actually show you how that's derived. Here we have the equation where the time constant is the inductance divided by the resistance. And my method of trying to show you that we're dealing with the units, I put little brackets around it. So the units of inductance divided by units of resistance. So what are the units of inductance? Well, we know they're Henry's, but how does that relate to other units? Going back to the standard definition of the voltage across an inductor, we can then say that the inductance is equal to the ratio of the voltage divided by the change in the current over time. Now the units of voltage is of course is volts and the change in current over time would be amps divided by time or seconds. So for the inductance we can write volts divided by the ratio of the current which is amps divided by time which is seconds. So the units of inductance can be written as volts divided by the fraction amps divided by seconds. Resistance for that we have to go to Ohm's law. We know that the current I is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And so therefore we can say that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So in this case, the units of resistance can be written in terms of volts divided by amps. Now notice here, I can write this as the units of volts times seconds divided by amps. Simply when I divide by fraction, the same as multiplying by its inverse, and then I divide that by volts divided by amps, and then here you can see that volts divided by amps cancels out volts divided by amps, this becomes one, and all we have left is seconds, which means that the units of the time constant in an LR circuit does indeed add up to 
the units of seconds or time. So you see, it's not as odd as we might think it is. And that's taking another look at the time constant in an LR circuit.